Most web applications need a sign up and login feature, but for new buys, this can be challenging. Even for professional developers, they prefer using external services to handle authentication right from the start. When we talk about the full stack authentication flow, it means you need to set up a user sign in, registration on the front end, and also securing the back end API. So you have to work on both parts. In this video, I will teach you how to build full stack authentication app without writing too much code, with low overhead, and with API 6, OWSCIR, and OpenID Connect. If you don't know yet what's OWSCIR, it's a highly uh, adoptable identity as a service platform for web application and mobile applications. Your users can log into your application through the built-in UI interface, something like that. And you don't need to build UI for users registration or login flow, which provides them actually like a secure and standard based login experience. So you can also customize with your own branding or various authentication methods such as email, also biometric logins, one-time password or SMS. We can like enable also multi-factor authentication. And it under the hood it uses OpenID Connect, OWS2 version and to identify who a user is and grant authorization to the protected resources. Here is a high-level architectural diagram of how the authentication process looks like. And as you can see, I have a web application can take various forms from single page application built with React, Vue, or Angular, to a standard web application crafted using frameworks like Express, Next.js, or similar tools. The web application is our client app with a front end sends the request to an identity provider, in our case, OWSCIR, with a client ID and client secret to collect the access token, in our case, a JWTT token. If the provided credentials are correct, OWSCIR replies with a JWT token with a web, to the web application and you can create as many as users for your app in OWSCIR portal. After having this JW token, access token, the client sends a request to an API gateway, uh, API 6, in our case with access token, and the backend APIs are now protected by the gateway. Before processing request, the API 6 needs to ensure that the provided token is valid, has not expired, and has the right scopes for the requested data and service. If the API 6 cannot locally validate the token, it sends a token introspection request to the OWSCIR authorization server. This request is typically made to introspection endpoint of your server. And OWSCIR receives this request and processes it and server checks its records to determine the token validity and its expiration, like maybe associated scopes. After checking that token state, it responds to the API 6. Based on the OWSCIR token response, API 6 can then make an informed decision. If the token is valid, it forwards the request to the backend API. Otherwise, it just rejects the client's request with an unauthorized HTTP status code. With the theoretical knowledge in mind, now we can jump into practical session. For quick start with the app, you can simply clone the repository and execute the code sample following steps provided in the readme file. As you can see, we are Im employing Docker Compose in the project to install and run three components like a backend API yeah, and API 6 API gateway and also the, for the front end we are using also Node.js and hosting a single page application that will run on local host 3000. And also API 6 API Gateway can be accessed from localhost 9080 and our the backend API that can be any application. In my case, I'm just simply using Nginx with single API that responds uh, with sort of uh, information. Here are some of the prerequisites before you begin. Uh, you need this following. You need to create an OWSCUR account and if you don't have one, you can sign up for free. I'm going to show you how you can configure application in OWSCUR. So uh, if you are 
using OwlSkill for the first time, we need to have an OwlSkill application that uh, works with our OIDC OpenID Connect client. Now I assume that you have OwlSkill account uh, created and we're gonna start with configuring OwlSkill. To do so, you need to go to OwlSkill.com under resources, find the docs, and from the docs you can directly uh, jump on the portal which where our, our skier provides some our authentication services. To use our skier services, you, you will need to have an application set up in the our skier dashboard. That's where we are now on our skier dashboard. And to get our skier OIDC client information, uh, this setup, let's say, uh, allow, allows the users in our skier to sign in to the web application automatically once they are authenticated, authenticated by the house gear. So first step, you need to go to applications. And I have few applications up to now is created. And I also uh, created my application here called OIDC client application. If you don't have one, you can just click add application and choose a specific application type. In our case, we are using OpenID Connect. So we can uh, click on the OIDC client application and click on save and navigate to it will bring you this uh, OwlSkill uh, setup page. Every application in OwlSkill is assigned alphanumeric unique client ID and the client secret that your application code will use to call OwlSkill APIs in our web application. Please record generated OwlSkill uh, issuer in my case issuer is just uh, our uh, OwlSkill endpoint and the client ID and client secret you need to save from the output because we will use these values in the next steps for the web application config and make sure that you also configure the redirect URA in our case authorize the redirect URAs of your application is it is a URL that OwlSkill will redirect to after the user has authenticated in order for OpenID Connect middleware to complete the authentication process. In our case, it will be our home page for our front-end application, right? It will run at localhost 3000. I can just bring and replace the default authorized redirect URAs to this. And, uh, and also make sure that sometimes you need to also enable access token. Uh, just to make sure that if it is not uh, enabled, just to make a toggle on option under access token section of your application configuration and to save all these changes, click and save. After we created the OwlSkill app, we need to choose how users need to authenticate on the login page. From the authentication tab, you navigate to a login methods. You can choose a login method from various options, including by email or mobile, or maybe using some social, a single sign on, or simply using some custom username or password method you specify. For this demo, we choose a simply email plus passwordless approach. If you clicked on email, you would choose a passwordless approach. But our users are asked to register an account first and log in by using their emails. And they will receive one-time password OTP to their emails and verify the code to use this app. Uh, once uh, we click on the email passwordless, we just click and save. Now we enable the login methods. Now everything is set up on our skill side. Next, we set up and run the demo project. We can bring the GitHub report and configure environment variables and uh, run these three services with docker. Start by cloning the project into your local machine. In my case, I have already cloned it and make the project directory your current working directory. In this case, API 6, OSC, OADC, full stack OS. And you can open the project also in your favorite editor. In my case, I am using a VS code. And as you can see, I open the demo project and uh, in the root directory of my project where a docker compose yaml file you create a new environment.env file with the following environment variables as you can see as these environment variables coming from our skill app where uh, 
you save it client ID client secret and who is issuer just uh, our skill OADC endpoint and we can also specify the our redirect URI of course you, you need to replace these values with your own our skill app settings from the our skill portal so after we added environment files we can now run the docker compose app command from the root directory we'll do docker compose app and here we go uh, uh, some logs are available in my case i'm using the windows operating system and docker desktop installed on my machine and uh, uh, as you can see these uh, three containers are, are up and running backend frontend and api 6. let me also walk you through the project folders uh, in which project folder what source of code is lying let's start with api 6 and as you can see the and api 6 folder i have api 6 yaml file and config yaml file and if you now open the config yaml file i am running api 6 in standalone mode which means uh, we has no dependencies to uh, source of data source like etcd it is running and saving the configuration files just uh, in the memory so you can watch another video i explain that how the standalone version works and it takes uh, all the configurations for the api 6 from the another yaml file called api 6 as you can see and this yaml file we can specify what kind of upstreams routes and plugins you would like to use for your project in my case i'm creating one single upstream that uh, plays uh, roles of my backend which means all the upcoming requests to the api gateway slash protected uh, paths will be redirected to this backend api and i'm using also a plugin called openid connect that's a plugin that api 6 offers but i'm also specifying the client id client secret from the OSCIRS discovery endpoint and i'm also giving the scope that we are going to use a, a scope called openid depending on which identity provider provides what kind of scope you can specify here in my case I also provides open ID and I'm also enabling use JWT key s or we call it uh, json uh, web key set it's a set of keys containing public keys used to verify any jwt token issued by uh, authorization server in my case auscure uh, we use this configuration to send when our client send the jwt token we send uh, to uh, auscure to verify if uh, the auscure token is still valid and we also enabled another uh, attribute beer only to true which means uh, this uh, authentication flow is machine to machine so the front end talking to api gateway and api gateway talking to uh, the backend apis which means api gateway when it receives a request from the front end it always requires uh, access token in the authorization header uh, if you make it false uh, it uh, switch to another authentication flow which is a client credentials it doesn't require in the header of this uh, sort of token and of course the redirection URL after clients has been successfully verified we had to redirect these requests in our case it was uh, localhost 3000 right that's about api 6 if you uh, open another folder called backend this is a simple backend application and with nginx that exposes only single endpoint slash protected and uh, it returns just uh, always 200 which means you are trying to get some uh, service or data from the protected resources so in this case api gateway uh, is just protecting this api and uh, you can make it this backend api by building some sort of python application java or dot net uh, depending on your backend for stack and the next one in my list is frontend just a simple frontend with node.js with uh, some simple uh, simple the libraries and also our main application is logic is under app.js as you can see app.js what it does it also makes a connection with our identity provider by uh, specifying the client id and secret and it does uh, two-step authentication and collecting jw token 
process in the client application. Uh, to do so, uh, what is happening in uh, client application is if uh, there is no not authenticated yet, which means there is no uh, query uh, code, I mean authentication, authorization code in the browser response in the query, which means our clients are not authenticated yet, we will just redirecting them to the login page provided by OutSkill and by uh, building this URI which means we are sending our clients trying to authenticate and they can uh, authenticate themselves on our skier and our skier replies with uh, query in the query this authorization code once we have the authorization code we can assume that our clients has already authenticated and next day we can ask the our skier each time client uh, makes a request uh, we can just collect the token from the house here and uh, get this token and we are also sending uh, another request to api6 api gateway uh, to the slash protected endpoint with the uh, access token we have just received as you can see we are setting this token inside the authorization builder token that's how this flow works uh, as we previously described it from the high level and this is how the process looks like in the code and then we can just simply simply just show the data from the uh, protected resources in our case from the backend api uh, it replies with sort of response as you can see the response was in our case simply uh, protected resource from api uh, has been accessed to test the full authentication flow i can navigate to localhost 300 and then it will open as you can see the ausgear built-in sign-in page if you don't have any user in the system you need to first sign up if you have user already in place you can just uh, write type your email address here for example exam uh, in my case i can just uh, write my own email address and then uh, and click on login after i log in as you can see uh, this outskill is sending to my email account the login link after i uh, click on the login link receive it in my email it will bring me to this page where uh, i need to confirm that uh, it's uh, me who is trying to access the, the resources now I, and then you can close the window after you close the window then on the next window it is already received another notification like link verified and if you click the next it will redirect you to the back to the back end uh, response this is how it the authentication process works right amazing sort of thing uh, and as you can see uh, the ausky replied with code in the uh, request in the response parameter which means uh, we are already uh, successfully authenticated and api6 did this token intro introspection with the OSCIR and we got a response from the backend api so api6 enforced the oidc authentication with OSCIR and provide a secure and streamlined authentication flow with easy setup that's it with this today's video tutorial thank you for watching if you would like to learn more about api6 or watch uh, and learn from the video tutorials please subscribe on our channel and click on the ring bell